Ah, hey, it's Ranger Ben and April. Looks like you guys have a lot of cool gear out on the table. What do you have to show us? Oh, hi, Josh. We're just here talking about the history of maple sugaring and the evolution of the tools. How did people discover how to make maple syrup? The Native Americans who were the first to discover you could turn the sap into delicious syrup. No one knows how they discovered it, but there are some legends that can give us some insight. One Native American legend tells us of a chief who just came back from a hunting trip. Unfortunately, his hunting trip was not that successful, and he took his tomahawk and flung it at the nearest tree right outside his wigwam. That a tomahawk stuck in that tree and he went inside his house and decided to just relax after that hunting trip. Well, his wife was just getting up for the day, getting ready to cook the evening's meal. She needed to head down to the stream to collect water in her birch bark basket. But she noticed where her husband had uh, thrown the tomahawk in the tree that it was dripping water. So she thought, well, easy for me. I can collect this water here instead of having to go all the way to the stream. So she put the birch bark basket right under where the tomahawk had been and collected the water in her birch bark basket, which was also her cooking pot, because this was a time before steel was here. So she took that birch bark basket back to her wigwam and cooked the evening soup with that water that came from the tree. And it cooked all day and it simmered and it evaporated. And then she served that meal that night and her family discovered it was the most tasty soup they had ever had. Oh, cool. Another theory is that the Native Americans observe squirrel behavior. Squirrels often nibble on maple trees and birch trees to get some of that sweet sap. And where those branches had been nibbled on, the sap would come out and form little sapsicles. I don't know about you, but I would be really tempted to snap one of those off and taste it. And we think maybe they tasted them and discovered that that sap was sweet. And the Native Americans would access the sap by making grooves in the bark with the tomahawk. Now this could injure the tree over time. And when you put the bucket against the bottom of the tree, much of it gets wasted. So they would find shrubs with a soft pith such as elderberry and sumac, and would burn out the center, creating a tube. This is a form of a spout that could direct the sap directly into this bark bucket. With the introduction of steel, spiles were able to be made much more durable. This spile is used with a special hook that goes on the end here. Now it is quite thin metal, so in order to drive it into the tree, we wouldn't want to hammer it, so there's a third piece called a spile driver that fits right in here. This creates a very durable surface that we could pound it into the tree with. Now, over time, people discovered that these could be easily lost, especially in deep snow. So to prevent that, steel spiles were made with an incorporated hook and also a flat surface here that could be hit with a hammer without having to carry all the separate pieces. Now, just like anything nowadays, technology progresses and they were able to make spiles out of plastic. This was cheaper for people to buy and also much lighter if you had to carry hundreds of these around. If you were to visit a maple syrup farm today, you might see a spile like this. It has a very interesting connection and we'll see what that's used for in just a minute. So just like spile technology has changed over time, so has collecting. Now, a long time ago, we had the birch bark baskets, which they collected the sap in. Eventually, we got to move to steel buckets. It is a very durable material. They can last year after year. And also, they each come with a hole in them, so the spile fits right in there and it can hook onto the tree. Now, some modern technology has even moved to plastic collection of sap where plastic bags are attached to this steel frame here and these bags are super cheap. An operation can order tons of these for a very low price. And even more technology has advanced for major maple sugaring operations are these tubing methods where they'll network a whole bunch of maple trees all together and a vacuum system will help pull the sap right into a sugar shack where they can evaporate the sap down into syrup. Wow, that's fascinating.